welcome to Nationwide on the network service of the NTA. We're glad to have you join us once again. I am Lydia ODJ Ochi. Two new commissioners have been sworn in to fill existing vacancies in the Revenue Mobilization Allocation and Fiscal Commission. President Muhammad Buhari performed the ceremony before the commencement of the weekly meeting of the Federal Executive Council. Those sworn in are Abdulaziz Idris King from Kogi State and Mohamed Sani Baba from Bauchi State. State House correspondent Adamu Sambo reports that Idris King was a member of the House of Representatives while Sani Baba served as Chief Executive of the Federal Airports Authority of Nigeria. The appointment for an initial period of five years was an exercise in exercise of presidential powers derived under sections 154 subsection 1 and 156 subsection 3 of the 1999 constitution as amended. The Revenue Mobilization Allocation and Fiscal Commission has amongst other functions to monitor the accruals to and disbursement of revenue from the Federation account. Senate has begun the consideration of the Finance Bill 2021. The money bill has passed second reading and seeks to introduce sweeping changes to tax laws covering seven different tax laws. The executive bill, among other issues, seeks to enhance domestic revenue mobilization efforts to increase tax and non-tax revenues. It also provides that pension contributions no longer require the approval of the Joint Tax Board to be tax deductible, that banks will request for tax identification number before opening bank accounts for individuals while existing account holders must provide their tax identification number to be able to continue operating their accounts. Authorities, as a formal channel of correspondence with taxpayers. Six, penalty for failure to tax tax will also apply to agents appointed for tax deduction. This penalty is 10% of the tax not deducted, plus interest in the prevailing military policy rate of the Central Bank of Nigeria. What we have realized in the past two or three years is that because of the seriousness attached to raising non-oil I mean, revenue, the question of having a very robust, dynamic, and efficient tax taxation regime cannot be oversized. And the bill is referred to committees on finance, customs, and trade and investment this joint committee will report to the Senate. They will lay the report, lay and consider on Tuesday next week. Meanwhile, the House of Representatives has resolved to investigate the National Youth Service Corps over its alleged refusal to reopen the permanent orientation camp in Meiduguri, Bernu State. This is sequel to a motion from Representative Usman Zana in which he pointed out that the NYSE orientation camp in Meduguri has been shut down for more than 10 years due to insecurity and its usage as an internally displaced persons camp. House members noted that the Borno State government has recently evacuated the IDPs and informed the management of the Corps on this development to facilitate the reopening of the camp. The House therefore wants to know why the camp is yet to reopen despite arrangements put in place to ensure safety of core members posted to Borno State. The NYSC has since the beginning of the insurgency been conducting orientation in Katsina State for core members posted to Borno State. In a bid to ensure timely completion of the Port Harcourt refinery, the House Committee on Petroleum Resources Downstream has requested that further steps be taken to towards the rehabilitation work to meet the stipulated deadline. Ijema Ugweke has details. The Port Harcourt refinery, which is two in one with the capacity of 210,000 barrels, is a project financing activity which has gone through the first phase of rehabilitation. The second phase, which is ongoing, is covering the rehabilitation of the power plants, processing area, jetty, water treatment plant, and processing equipment. It's due to be completed in 24 months. That will be sometime around April, March of 2023. That is it. That is what we are looking at. Other parts of the process plans have been finished in 36 months, and then the overall project, including all non-plant activities, will be completed in 24 months. 
The visit also provided an opportunity for the House Committee to get on the spot assessment of the extent of work done at the refinery. If the stakeholders still have complaint, the respect of uh, the job uh, so far done, they should tell us uh, we have discussed and uh, so far so good. So we pray uh, in the next uh, three months when we come, we will see uh, uh, additional progress. The chairman of the committee, Abdullahi Mahmoud Gaya, and other members, while interacting with executive members and managing director, Port Harcourt Refinery Company, Ahmed Diku, emphasized that efforts should be geared towards ensuring security technology roadmap and maintenance is adopted to avert the challenge that led to the breakdown of the refinery in Port Harcourt, Ijomu Weke, NTA News. The Minister of Power, Abu Bakr Aliu, has reaffirmed the commitment of the Ministry to working with all stakeholders to ensure service continuity in all areas served by the Abuja Electricity Distribution Company, AEDC. This follows changes in the appointment of an interim management for the company by the stakeholders, which has been endorsed by the Nigerian Electricity Regulatory Commission and the Bureau of Public Enterprises, BPE. A statement by the Minister of Power, Abubakar Aliu, states that AEDC has of recent been facing significant operational challenges arising from a dispute between the core investors, CAN Consortium, as owners of 60% equity in the company, and the UBA, as lenders for the acquisition of the majority shareholding in the public utility. The situation, the minister said, has deteriorated due to lack of access to intervention finances, where entitlements of AEDC staff are being owed that resulted to recent industrial action, which federal government quickly intervened. intervened. The 47th Ordinary Session of the Mediation and Security Council of the ECOWAS Ministers holding in Abuja is spiraling resolutions for improved security and stability in the region. Foreign Dex correspondent Usman Aliu reports. Mission about unity and economic development of the 14 West African member nations block in close cooperation for 47 years and now tackling security threats by terrorist travel restriction imposed by some global powers due to Omicron variant and political instability in the region are the immediate issues on the table. I'm confident that our accomplishments as a community and the challenges threatening our progress will inspire us all to engage in lively deliberations and conclusions that will contribute greatly to pushing our community's integration agenda to newer heights. There are major concerns which this meeting is considering for deliberation. First, the issue of progress towards restoration of democratic order in Mali and Guinea. And the other issue is the eternal elongation of democratically elected leaders in the region, which has been observed that overstay and tinkering with constitutional provision during election is brewing tension. Now it has been inserted in the draft, uh, the issue of uh, two-term limit for head of state is there uh, as, pro as uh, recommended by the expert, uh, validated by the ministers and then the, the ambassadors, and then yesterday at the parliament. So the ministers, I suppose, are going to debate uh, that issue. Despite the worries over military troubles in some member nations of the ECOWAS region, the recent peaceful elections in Cape Verde and the Gambia resonate hope for the survival of democracy and good governance. Usman Aliu, NTA News. The need for Nigeria to strengthen capacities in health research and local vaccine production is one of the outcomes of the National COVID-19 Summit in Abuja. At the close of the summit, Secretary to the Government of the Federation and Chairman Presidential Steering Committee on COVID-19, Boss Mustafa, called for greater synergy among all levels of government to upscale health infrastructure in the country. Nitaire Ikwen has more. Participants at this summit agreed that the pandemic has been a wake-up call for policymakers at the federal and sub-national levels to elevate health care delivery in the country. The collaboration between the federal government and the states, because that is the only way you can maintain sustainability. That is the only way. And we need to pull the strings of our boots and hit the road and hit it really rough and fast. 
to be able to push these vaccines. The coronavirus spread has shown that healthcare is the main power that shapes the economy and politics. If we can understand the pathophysiology of, of COVID in this environment, then we can find some biological markers. Once you find that biological marker, then you can use that to perhaps develop a vaccine or a therapeutic agent. There is need for Nigeria to build on the very, very exceptional work that has been done by the Presidential Steering Committee to create a more formidable healthcare system that will be resilient enough to address any pandemic or epidemic in the nearest future. So preparedness is a takeaway. The summit comes to a close, but the COVID-19 pandemic is still raging. State governments are urged to counter vaccine hesitancy with greater advocacy. In Abuja, Mitaire, Ikbe, NTA News. Still on health, the Federal Ministry of Health has denied certain media reports that some COVID-19 vaccines have expired in Nigeria. The report. Reacting to certain misgivings on the COVID-19 vaccines, the Ministry of Health said Nigeria of late enjoyed the generosity of several European countries who have offered doses of COVID-19 vaccines out of their stockpiles free of charge. The donations, the ministry noted, was always acknowledged, stating that some of them had the residual shelf lives of only humans to expire, while some few weeks for usage which are well stored. The ministry stressed that Nigeria does not dispense vaccines with a validity extended beyond level expiry date and will continue to adhere to standards. Franks? ...of Niger State Governor Dr. Amina Uwakar Bello has highlighted the importance of COVID-19 and urged all eligible persons to go for the jab. She stated this during the flagging off of the second round of maternal, newborn, and child health week, which seeks to reduce indices of child and maternal mortality in the state. Fatima Usman reports. The second phase of the November-December maternal, newborn, and child health week, a biannual event, is aimed at reducing child and maternal mortality. The forum also marked the beginning of COVID-19 mass vaccination campaign with the vaccines now available at designated health facilities across the state. The federal government has supplied us vaccines to give the target population from the age of 18 and above. Um, and uh, we're hopeful that people mobilize themselves and come and get these vaccinations. So I want to encourage everybody to have the vaccines. I had mine complete two doses. So I can comfortably tell people that it is okay and they can come and have the vaccine. So it's extremely important that people avail themselves. The importance is to ensure that we have healthy communities, healthy newborns, healthy children, and healthy mothers. The maternal newborn and child health week, which will run across the state between 6th and 10th of the month, is expected to feature the administration of vitamin A supplement to children between the ages of 6 to 59 months. Other interventions include routine immunization, distribution of long lasting insecticide treated mosquito nets to pregnant women, prevention of mother to child transmission of HIV services, and sustained campaign on hand washing. Emina Fatima Usman, NTA News. Away from health for now. Ten years of uninterrupted broadcast to Nigerians and beyond in Igbo, Hausa, and Yoruba languages have been described as a major feat in sustaining the rich cultural heritage of Nigeria and her peoples. Director General, Nigerian Television Authority, Yakub Ibn Mohammed, gave the commendation while declaring open a three-day event to mark Language Channel's 10th anniversary. Showcasing its heritage and its diversity. <laughs> The Nigerian Television Authority has always set the pace in promoting culture and in promoting unity 
NTA language is celebrating its 10 years anniversary of disseminating information in different languages. A celebration of the people for their role in supporting broadcasting in the language they understand. We are working towards making NTA language the number one platform on the NTA family to record with. Director General of NTA, Yakubu Ibi Mohammed, recognizes the pioneering role played by legendary broadcaster and former executive director programs, Bello Sule. Without even being told, you said this man is going to speak in the room. If you look at the EPO channel, the moment a newscaster comes, even before answering the war, you know the medium of communication is going to be in so that is its distinctive identity. Uh, we've done well. We have done well in the past 10 years, but let's not be deceived. There is a long way to go. There were also goodwill messages from some executive directors and director multi-channels of NTA who were also present at the event. Lagos is our first stop. And Adiola will be guiding us. Adiola, it's over to you. Thank you, Lydia. Violence broke out at Ojodu a day after some students of Babs Fafunwa Millennium School, formerly known as Ojodu Grammar School, were killed by a truck driver. This resulted in a protest by students to express their anger. Hengino Jun Adams reports that the situation has been controlled by security operatives. They wanted to cause another riot, having lost so many lives. You can see right there, policemen have been deployed to make sure that the situation is calm. Life seems to have returned to normal in Ojodu area after the sad incident. But hidden behind the tranquil atmosphere are pains of losing the lives of children with promising future caused by the driver of this truck. These littered shoes and school uniform are evidence of the pains they experienced before taking their last breath. People are not happy at all with what's happened. A visit to the school reveals that students have been told to go back home because there was tension amongst them which led to a protest that turned violent. Teachers and members of all Ojodu Residents Association were seen within the school premises discussing the way forward. A school like this, they're supposed to have uh, what they call bomb there on the other side that will limit the speed of any motor that is coming. But if you see that road now, there's no, nothing like that. Efforts to locate families of the victims was fruitless as the teachers and others declined speaking to the media on their whereabouts. Meanwhile, the Federal Road Safety Corps, which had its share of the protests, says it is working to ensure peace in the area. We've been able to invite our sister agencies and security agencies. We have the police and the civil defense on the ground who are managing the situation. This was where the ugly incident happened. And for many in Ojodu, this bus stop will always bring back sad memories. In Lagos, Hingino John Adams, NTA News. Sad memories indeed. Now, Lagos, one of the first ports of call of the colonial masters, has rich cultural heritage, but unfortunately, this is underprojected. This trend is what NCA Lagos Network Center is set to change with programs geared towards putting the narrative straight. Zonal Director of the Center, Lawal Ahmed, made the promise when management visited the Oba of Lagos, Oba Rail 1, Akiuli. These cannons are historic symbols. They were used by the British naval forces to bombard Lagos in 1851. A pathetic story that may not be known by many youths. This convergence of the traditional institution and media industry initiated by the management of NTA Lagos Network Center is aimed at establishing a partnership that will project such stories. Both parties have assets to bring to the discussion table. 
Lagos has great cultural and economic materials which NTA can showcase through its wide audience coverage. When you sell information, which many people did not know, it will be an eye opener to those who will assist. Zonal director NTA Lagos Network Center said the station is a force against cultural extinction. It is very important that we need to re-establish, you know, redefine and remodel our cultures. Cultures are export products. The visit later turned to a tour where NTA management was shown some historic items and places within the palace. Inside, like I said, is where the other and the community offer prayers every nine, nine days, you know, for the well-being of the community, well-being of the state, and well-being of Nigeria in general. With this new relationship, it is expected that many people around the world will know about the rich cultural heritage of the state. In Lagos, Hinginu John Adams, NTA News. And that's it from here. Nationwide will continue with Mohammed Aimee Duguri after this break to stay with us. The 2022 Armed Forces Remembrance Day celebration is here again. The Nigeria Armed Forces work tirelessly day and night to give us peace to go about our businesses. Some have paid the supreme price. Should we forget the families and loved ones they left behind? No. I'm therefore privileged to honor these veterans who devoted most of their lives, active lives, to securing the nation and the world at large. So, let's support the Nigerian Armed Forces and their families, corporate organizations, government agencies, parastators, and individuals. Let's show our love and support for our armed forces. They are our heroes. Buy the Armed Forces Remembrance Emblem and donate into the Armed Forces Remembrance Emblem Appeal Account. We love you, and your labor and sacrifice will not be in vain for spilling your blood for us to leave. Are you an entrepreneur? Do you operate small businesses, sell, promote, or market product or equipment, rent, hire, produce, offer services in music, food, fashion, film, photography, painting, sculpture, play, drama, comedy, travel, and hospitality sector? Enjoy Nigeria Expo 2021 is here for you to showcase your product, services, and skills. Learn how to grow your business, connect with customers, network with frontline entrepreneurs in your sector across Nigeria. Enjoy Nigeria Expo is holding from December 6 to 12, 2021. At the Abuja International Trade and Convention Center, Kilometer 8, Umaru Adwa Expressway, Airport Road, Abuja. For inquiry, call 009 114 3424. 009 643 0859. Enjoy Nigeria Expo 2021. It's brought to you by Federal Ministry of Industry, Trade and Investment, Federal Ministry of Information and Culture. Welcome to Nigeria Project and Abuja Chambers of Commerce and Industry. Enjoy Nigeria. Future assured through cultural creativity. The Small and Medium Enterprises Development Agency of Nigeria is here to help you succeed. Medium gives you entrepreneurship training that will make your business grow big. It can create access to finance. Smeden can help you prepare a good feasibility study and link you up with the finance institutions that will fund your business. It can also create access to market through local and international trade fairs, opportunity fairs, and exhibitions. Smeden also organizes programs to identify innovative entrepreneurs and promote their business ideas. Contact us at Plot 35, Potak of Crescent, Area 11, Garaki, Abuja, or visit our website, www.smedan.gov.ng. It's a trip back to Anfield for Steven Gerrard as he takes his new team to face the Reds. This Saturday, it's Liverpool versus Aston Villa on the Premier League Live, showing on the network service of the NTA from 3.30 p.m. The Premier League Live is brought to you by Babari Jebu and powered by Integral. Welcome to Nationwide from Medigree. Bruno State Government has launched the Contributory Healthcare Schemes and Basic Healthcare Provision Fund Implementation Program. The program, which has the theme ensuring healthy citizenry through sustainable healthcare financing, is being implemented by Bruno State Contributory Healthcare Management Agency, Boshma. Mohamed Beni reports that Minister of State for Health was represented by the University of Medigree Teaching Hospital.
establishment of Borno State Contributory Healthcare Management Agency paved the way for implementing the Contributory Healthcare Scheme aimed at achieving the universal healthcare coverage of the United Nations, both at primary and secondary school healthcare facilities. Vulnerable citizens that include children under the age of five years, pregnant women, the aged, fiscally challenged, poor, and pensioners are designed to benefit from the Basic Healthcare Provision Fund. Beneficiaries of the support express joy over the inclusion in the program. This administration recognizes the importance of health in the development of our society and is according topmost priority to it as encapsulated in the third pack agenda. The Federal Ministry of Health is fully aware of the exceptional efforts your Excellency is making to develop the primary secondary and tertiary healthcare in the state. State's Commissioner of Health, Juliana Bitru, said contributory healthcare scheme is also aimed at organizing, delivering, and financing healthcare service in such a way that people can access the service without financial hardship. While the State Executive Secretary, Borno State Contributory Healthcare Management Agency, Dr. Saleh Abakaza, illustrated the disbursement of the basic healthcare provision fund, as well as commencement of registration of over 700 primary health cares, among others. President, Commonwealth Medical Association, Dr. Osahun Enabulele, Executive Secretary, NHIS, Professor Mohamed Nasir Sambo, Executive Secretary, Anambara State Healthcare Insurance Scheme, Dr. Simeon Mayumachi, urged Borno State Government to ensure inclusiveness of all categories in the society for the success of the program. President, Association of Resident Doctors, Dr. Dare Eshaya, presented a word of excellence to Governor Zulum on behalf of his organization for landmark achievement in the health sector, especially training of health workers for capacity building. In Maiduguri, Mahmoud Goni, NTA News. In the meantime, Borno State Governor, Professor Babagana Umara Zulum, has visited soldiers injured during a fight between Nigerian troops and ISWAP terrorists at Ran, a border town between Nigeria and Cameroon in Kalabalige, local government area of Borno State. A worker, Mohamed Musa, reports. Governor Babagana Umar Azulum interacted with and consoled all the affected soldiers admitted in Army Hospital at Memalari Barracks, located in Meduguri, where he was received by the General Officer Commanding 7th Division of the Nigerian Army, Brigadier General Abdul Wahab Eitayo. The governor directed the release of 5 million naira, which was immediately shared to all the soldiers on admission including those unconnected with the Kalabalgi battle. Governor Zulum consoled the soldiers and commended them for their gallantry and patriotism. The Director of Army Public Relations, Brigadier General Onyema Nwachuku, had in a press statement disclosed that the insurgents mounted gun trucks and motorcycles and attacked troops deployed to the forward operational base in Rand, during which the troops gallantry killed 26 terrorists and captured their combat vehicles, 18 AK-47 rifles, and one M-21 rifle with large quantity of ammunition. The military added that several other equipment were also destroyed by the troops who forced the insurgents to abandon their mission and withdraw in disarray, even though two officers and five soldiers paid the supreme price while three personnel sustained gunshot wounds and were moved to the hospital in Maiduguri, Abu Bakr Mohammed Musa, NTA News. That is it from Maiduguri. Is back to Lydia in Abuja. Many thanks. President Muhammad Buhari has expressed sadness over the recent gruesome attack on innocent travelers in Sakoto State. A statement by the special advisor to the president, media and publicity Femi Adeshino, stated that President Buhari is very distressed at the manner of death visited on these helpless citizens who were undertaking a legitimate journey to another part of the country. The president extends his deep condolences to the families of the victims and assures that the security agencies will continue to give their all to bring to an end the operations of these despicable people. In the same vein, President Muhammad Buhari commiserates with parents, relations, and friends of Ojodu grammar school, grammar school students who lost their lives in an accident along Sherry Road, Ojodu, in Lagos State. President Buhari also condoles with the government and people of Lagos State and the authorities of Ojodu Grammar School over the sad and painful loss of the promising lives that were cut short 
in the tragic incident. He prays that the Almighty God will comfort the grieving parents and relations at this very difficult time and grant the injured quick recovery. The National Multi-Sectoral Plan of Action for Food and Nutrition 2021 to 2025 has been launched in Abuja. The five-year plan is expected to guide implementation of intervention programs to address hunger and malnutrition across all sectors of the economy. Neka Oku reports. Action plan launched. Time to show commitment in reducing hunger and malnutrition to lay a strong foundation for improved standard of living and socioeconomic development. The launch is a means to an end, so more work at this time is needed within these five years to get tangible results. For the Minister of State, Budget and National Planning, no fears in meeting of the target. Our renewed vision is in Nigeria where all children, particularly the most vulnerable, have access to safe and nutritious meals. Health is only wet when our food becomes our medicine, and our medicine is our food. The country is taking an holistic view of addressing the challenges through looking at the food system in its entirety. Perhaps even more important than these partnerships will be the leadership required to drive through the the objectives of the plan. We also want to use this opportunity to call on all, especially all line MDAs, to please allocate and promptly release adequate funds for the implementation of this plan. The National Multi-Sectoral Plan of Action for Food and Nutrition, if effectively implemented, will reduce the proportion of people who suffer malnutrition by 50% and increase exclusive breastfeeding rate to 65%. In Abuja, Neka Uku, NTN News. Gombe State is following in the path of the Buhari administration to ensure food sufficiency in the country. Governor Muhammadu Inua Yahaya stated this when he performed the groundbreaking ceremony for the 2021 dry season wheat production in Gombe State House in Gombe State. Emmanuel Akila reports. Dry season farmers in Dogo Rua, Kaltingo local government area, welcoming Governor Mohamed Inoua Yahaya, who comes with dry season farming equipment and other inputs under a partnership with the National Agricultural Land Development Authority, NALDA, to empower them in wheat production. Agriculture is the mainstay of our economy, which provides food and employment to over 75% of our populace. Government will not relent in providing necessary assistance and support needed by this group in order to meet up with their requirements. The desire of NALDA is for Nigeria to close the gap in wheat production and consumption while creating job opportunities in the agriculture value chain, especially in wheat production. Gombe State government came into it is something that um, is worth doing and something that will bring job opportunities and reduce youth restiveness, but above all, achieving food security. The farmers are happy with the collaboration between the federal and Gombe state governments towards increasing their capacity to raise the bar in dry season farming. In the partnership, while Gombe state provides the land, NALDA comes with the farming inputs needed by the farmers. In Gombe, Emmanuel Akila, NTN News. Government agencies have been urged to consult widely with the public to ensure that only policies that will have a direct impact on the lives of citizens are formulated. This was at an event put together by the National Orientation Agency and Partners to evaluate impact of national economic policies on nation building. Kenneth Nanim was there. Beyond fight against corruption and insecurity in the country, the forum identified other policies by federal government aimed at revamping the country's economy to boost investments in infrastructure, create jobs, provide credit facilities to micro, small and medium enterprises. Government is coming out with very important and impactful policies, but there seem to be inadequate understanding on the part of the public as to how they can benefit and appropriate from these policies. Have these policies actually impacted the lives of Nigerians 
are some of the questions this forum is providing answers to. Do we have enough funds? Do we have enough political will? Do we have enough commitment, even from the um, agencies that are supposed to drive the implementation? Government is doing so much, and unfortunately, bulk of what the government is doing is underreported simply because of uh, lack of information and so much politicking. It burns down on the civil service now, the, the civil service and the organizations, to really help the government in driving its policies. Affordable housing for low income earners, conditional cash transfer to vulnerable citizens, the end power and the school feeding program are other policies designed to have direct impact on the beneficiaries. Other views expressed here include the need for a periodic evaluation of implementation processes for optimal performance. Kenneth Nanim, NTA News. Enugu is next in line, and Mina is standing by with more reports. Hello, Mina. Hello, Lydia. Good evening and welcome to Enugu. Waiting for a permanent solution to the age-long water problems in Enugu has been a long deal for residents of the coal city. However, with the assurances of a concrete action plan by the state government towards tackling the problems, Enugu water scarcity may soon come to an end. Governor Uguani raised the people's hope during the commissioning of a water project in Enugu. Susan Eze has details. Exacerbated by the topography of the state, challenges of water supply in Enugu have lingered for decades. According to Water Aid Nigeria, about 2.5 million residents of Enugu do not have access to portable water. With the state participating in the AFD, French Development Agency supported water project, the state governor, Ifanyu Gwani, assures residents that this crucial infrastructure challenge would soon be a thing of the past. Within the AFD implementation plan, the detailed engineering design of the project, he said, is in progress. The dilapidated water pipeline network in Enugu Metropolis will be replaced with new ones, while new estate development and unserved neighborhoods will be connected to the public water supply system. Lamenting that the administration made a heavily challenged water sector on inception. The governor is, however, glad that government's efforts are solving the water problems in Enugu, in addition to complementary efforts of private individuals, are yielding positive fruits. Under the French Development Agency AFD project, the Oji River and Ajale pumping stations are to be revamped with total rehabilitation of the distribution system. The effort is towards meeting the 150,000 cubic meters daily water demand of the state in Enugu. Susan S. NTA News. Civil servants in Enugu State are complying with the directive by the federal government to take COVID-19 vaccination. Chidi Ukurapo visited some government offices in Enugu State to monitor the level of compliance. In October, mandated civil servants to get vaccinated and with the directive of no vaccination, no work, most workers in Enugu State resorted for the compulsory COVID-19 vaccination. The primary health care development agency, Enugu, as well as the federal secretariat are among the offices NTA News crew visited. Some of the workers stated that they have been vaccinated and urged their colleagues to endeavor to do the same. Much enlightenment from the government and the authority concerned. And after observing uh, people that are taking it, I, f I see that there's no side effect and I want to take it also to at least vaccinate against the deadly disease. I've taken mine first and second dose. I'm encouraging people I know that have not come to come and take it. Yes, I've taken the vaccination. It is good to take the vaccine because people, the propaganda people are carrying about about the vaccine, that it, it has a microchips, it has this, it has that, it's mere fellas. Others who spoke off camera say they are not interested in the COVID-19 vaccination and we use legal means to assert their position. 
The federal government, through the Nigeria Center for Disease Control, has reported the detection of new variants of COVID-19, Omicron, in the country. In Enugu, Chidi, Okrafo, NTN News. And that's a bit from Enugu. It's back to Libya in Abuja for a continuation of Nationwide. Many thanks, Mina. Let's take a break now. Nationwide continues. Nigerian youths are about the greatest assets the country has at the moment. It is therefore not surprising that the administration of President Mohamed Buhari is strategically responding to the yearnings of the youth through multiple projects and programs. Youth Entrepreneurship Support Years by Bank of Industry, the Youth Investment Fund by the CBN, and several other conditional cash transfer programs. Recruitment of 774,000 social workers, majority of whom are youth and so many other projects that are beneficial to youths directly or indirectly. If the administration can do all this, definitely, with a degree of patience and time, it can achieve more. Nigerian youths must come together to say no to terrorism, no to vandalism, and no to all disruptive tendencies. Hashtag Youth for Greater Nigeria. Pacifying the youths. You know from dusk to dawn, 24 hours a day. NTA International is with you. In your living room, office, and everywhere, anywhere. We provide a company you desire in terms of balanced and up-to-date news, programs, and the best of entertainment. To DSTV channel 251, Go TV channel 91, Freeview channel 264, or live streaming via www.visiontv.co.uk. You can also see us on Facebook and YouTube for quality content on the go. NTA International, Africa's window to the world. Cup of Nations starts on the 9th of January 2022 on NTA, powered by AfroSports. For sponsorship and advertisements, contact us on 090-9890-6913 or 090-3513-2838. It's a trip back to Anfield for Stephen Gerrard as he takes his new team to face the Reds. This Saturday, it's Liverpool versus Aston Villa on the Premier League Live. Showing on the network service of the NTA from 3.30 p.m. The Premier League Live is brought to you by Babai Jebu and powered by Integral. For more reports on nation drive of shifting from oil sector to non-oil sector for income generation is yielding a positive response in Sokoto State. This is coming as Association of Spices Producers and Processors were engaged in two-day training for good agricultural practices. Sheikh Mohammed Deti reports. This is a gathering that brought together over a hundred members of different spices producers and processors in Sokoto. The idea is to update them with the modern agricultural practices to enhance their production. This is with a view to getting maximum market share from the commodities for export across the borders. It is also meant to expand the scope of Nigeria's foreign exchange. The intention is to expand the sector so that everybody will be involved. It is only the youth that can turn around the economy of every nation. Leadership of associations believe the knowledge acquired will be extended to members through step-down training by the associations. Let the farmers understand that it's a business and there are certain procedures and that is what we bring it to them now to train them on how to produce standard uh, garlic, onion, tomatoes, pepe, 
that it can go to anywhere in the world. This training uh, is good to equip our farmers with the best um, practices that is being um, used worldwide to see how we can improve force on production. Facilitator of the training took the farmers through site selection, sourcing of seeds, and nursery site selection, among other improved mechanisms. The training is simultaneously going on in 20 states of the Federation. In Sakwato, Shio Muhammadetti, NTA News. The wife of the Kebi State Governor, Dr. Zainab Shinkafi Bagudu, has described awareness building as the best way to fight gender-based violence across the country. Hassan Abubakar Koko reports that this came up at an awareness walk organized by the Kebi State Governor's wife. The wife of the governor, Dr. Zainab Shinkafi Bagudu, stated that the work is part of the activities to commemorate the 16 days activism against gender-based violence, which aims at creating more awareness on the need for people to speak out. She said all major stakeholders were involved in taking a holistic approach on the issues of gender-based violence, pointing out that anyone found guilty will be brought to justice. Over 80% of Nigerians reside in the rural areas. They don't know about laws. These laws that we have in the justice system does not mean so much to them. But I do agree that we need to have a sane society where these laws form the foundation of access to justice for our people. The Commissioner for Justice, Hajia Ramatugulma, stressed that the ministry is committed to do justice to all victims by prosecuting any perpetrator, adding that nobody is above the law. Various organizations at the event pledged their total support and cooperation to the fight and call for dispensation of justice by bringing the culprits to book in order to serve as deterrent to others. Participants were told some of the causes physical and psychological effects and treatments of gender-based violence, as well as some issues relating to cancer. Earlier, the Emir of Gondu and Chairman Kebi State Council of Chiefs, Mohammed Ilya Subasha, represented, promised their support to the campaign against gender-based violence. The work started at the Emir of Gondu's palace through government house and ended at the presidential lodge burning Kebi. Hassan Abubakar Koko, NTA News. Well, that's it for us here in Sokoto. Nationwide continues with Lydia in Abuja. Thanks for joining us. Thank you, Nana Aisha. Leaders of various ethnic groups in the oil and solid minerals producing areas in the country have commended Governor Ben Ayade for proffering lasting solution to the conflict between farmers and herders. Paul Ebo reports that this was when the group visited him in Government House, Calabar. The giant king grass is Governor Ben Ayadi's solution to permanently resolve the conflict between farmers and herdsmen, which has been ongoing for several years, leading to destruction of lives and property. The giant king grass, after planting, gets matured within a short period of time and can serve as pasture for cattle which will curtail the nomadic lifestyle of cattle rearers as well as reduce incessant clashes with farmers. So what I think is a deliberate recalibration of the equation. I ask myself, if indeed open grazing is coming with its attendant consequences, the sociology and anthropology are unacceptable. We must find a way to create a mix and balance between the herders and the farmers. And that's the essence of being a leader. So before I passed the crossover law, I decided to pull back and do and find a solution. We want to thank the governor and people of Crossover State because the issue of herders farmers crisis could have rocked this country. And the solution came from Crossover State. Governor Ben Ayadi was also applauded for his agricultural transformation policy and the people of Cross River State urged to work with him to achieve desired goals for the state. In Calabar, Paul Abel, NTA News. The Court of Appeal has launched its 2021 rules enactment enacted to ensure expeditious and qualitative justice delivery. The Chief Justice of Nigeria, Ibrahim Tanko Mohammed, at the launching of the rules in Abuja, described 
the court as strategic to the work of Supreme Court. Judiciary correspondent Vera Chimuba reports that the penultimate magazine was also unveiled. The Court of Appeal 2021 rules and attendant practice directions are innovation driven and aim to increase the efficiency of judicial system in Nigeria. The rules also come with provisions that help to mitigate hardship that come with unforeseen circumstances like COVID-19 pandemic. Chief Justice of Nigeria, Ibrahim Tanku Muhammad, who also declared the annual conference of the judges of the court opened, commended the court for efficiency and solicited support for its operations. Without the court of appeal, I do not think that the Supreme Court will function effectively. It is a vital court. It is a court that we cannot do without. It rise to the challenge and restore public confidence in our ability to dispense justice without fear or favor. The rules are in line with Clarion Call as they seek to facilitate the speedy and thorough determination of all appeals before the Court of Appeal. Without this rules place, the Court of Appeal would be disrupted. This is the instrument that will help in the speedier and fairer dispensation of justice. For engaging with the general public, the court also came out with a magazine, the penultimate unveiled by the FCT minister, Mohamed Musabilu, in Abuja, Viera, Chumoba, NTA News. The federal government says the action to appoint an interim team to manage Abuja Electricity Distribution Company, AEDC, was not done on the basis of its directive, but based on legal processes arising from the failure of the core investor in AEDC to meet its oblig obligations to a lender. A statement jointly signed by Chairman Nigerian Electricity Regulatory Commission, Sanusi Garba, and Director General Bureau of Public Enterprises, Alex Oko, states that federal government remains committed to the ongoing initiatives on the recovery of the electricity sector but private investors should remain cognizant of their responsibilities to their stakeholders, especially in regulated utilities, and should not act in a manner that jeopardizes public interest. In the meantime, Minister of Power, Abubakar Aliu, has reaffirmed the commitment of the ministry to working with all stakeholders to ensure service continuity in all areas served by the Abuja Electricity Distribution Company, AEDC. This follows changes in the appointment of an interim management for the company by the stakeholders, which has been endorsed by the Nigerian Electricity Regulatory Commission and the Bureau of Public Enterprises. The Minister of Power, Abubakar Aliu, states that AEDC has of recent been facing significant operational challenges arising from a dispute between the core investors, CAN Consortium, as owners of 60% equity in the company and the UBA as lenders for the acquisition of the majority shareholding in the public utility. This situation, the minister said, has deteriorated due to lack of access to intervention finances where entitlements of AEDC staff are being owed that resulted to recent industrial action which federal government quickly intervened. Now let's take the latest news in sports.